Hello, critics, non-critics, and friends. Welcome to the Film Optics Podcast, where we take a glance into blockbusters, indie films, and everything in between. I'm your host, Christian, and as always, I'm joined by my partner in film, Devin, and today we're going to be sharing our spoiler thoughts on the final season of The Umbrella Academy, now streaming on Netflix, all six episodes. Yes, six episodes, not ten episodes. I was pretty shocked when I heard that, too. But before we begin today's episode, you can listen to our podcast on podcast platforms around the internet. That includes Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and more. And if you are a new or seasoned listener to the show, we would love to hear from you guys. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and threads at Film Optics. That is Optics with an X. Or you can email us at filmoptics at gmail.com for any movie-related questions. Or you can send us a text message. We don't have the number per se, but if you go into the episode notes, it is the first link as soon as you click on this episode or any episode. Before it even gets into the episode notes, there's a link that says send us a text message. You click that link and a number will generate and that will go into our uh, podcast inbox and we can answer your questions that way so this is another way to get in touch with us outside of the old social media but Devin what's going on how has your weekend been what have you been watching what you've been playing what have you even been up to these past few days you know it's been been a pretty good weekend um I actually do have a recommendation as for something that you could start watching if you haven't already I know there's just so much to watch already there's a lot to watch out there, but I'm, I'm always open for recommendations. So uh, I've started watching um, the Max original. It's never not going to sound dumb, but that's what <laughs> we have to call it. Um, it's called Industry. I don't know if you've heard of it. Is that the show with Kit Harrington? Um, he's not in the first season yet, but yeah, I think he does eventually hop on board. Okay. The Industry. Okay. I think I've heard of that before. Because I'm I'm almost done with the first season and it's it's quite good. Wow, what it's did basically you? it's basically like if Euphoria took place in a UK office building. Oh, you, you had me at UK office building. Well, actually, you had me at Euphoria. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very British. It's very very adult um, themed. A lot of drugs and and whatnot. But yeah, it's pretty entertaining. Yeah, I see that. Um, oh, three seasons. Wow. Yeah, I think the third one's ongoing right now. Um, oh, my God. What's his face from... Actually, there's a few people I recognize outside of... Well, I'm looking at the season one right now, just going through the thumbnails. My gosh, the girl from Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. I'm blanking on her name. Yeah. Mahala. Mahala. Something like that. And Andy is in this movie. Or the the android Andy from... That's, that's one of the main reasons that I... Went to go watch it because I saw people recommending it after Romulus came out. They're like, if you liked him in this, you should watch this. David Johnson is his name. Yeah. 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 I'm just going through the thumbnails. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll definitely have the. It's it's funny that you mentioned the industry. I was actually at I was at my friend's son's birthday party. He turned one years old. So he's he's been in the world for one year. He's he's a great kid. Um, so I was talking to his dad. Uh, his name is Chris and my other friend, Colin. And we were talking about how, or actually Chris brought it up. He was like, he's like, have you ever noticed? He's like, there's kind of like this weird trend with HBO shows where the first like season or two of like the television shows are good, but like they don't really start hitting mainstream until like the third season. And he brought up the industry and I was like, okay, I think yeah, I think it's you know, starting to like really gain some buzz now. Like yeah. it was kind of quiet before. I'm definitely going to check this out for sure because I'm, I mean, I'm always looking for new TV shows, like for sure. So I'm, I'm definitely going. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this out out today. And watch. The next thing I know, you know, it's gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna be finishing it up before you know it. But that is a great recommendation. Thank you for letting me know because, you know, it's it's nice to you know outside of like the flagship shows and movies that you can watch like on max or netflix or hulu there's a lot of other great stuff out there so it's like you never know 
I'm really just waiting for that Hard Knocks um, Steelers episode <laughs> to hit HBO Max. It's going to be wild. That Yeah. I, I think it is coming, I believe. Yeah, it's going to be during the season. During the season, that's right. Um, also, I just uh, found out that Horizon, an American Saga, Chapter 1, is on Max. <laughs> Go for it. Three, Three hours. hours and two minutes. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay, so the industry. I'm definitely going to check that out for sure. I actually just finished uh, listening to an audio book. Um, it's uh, Iron Flame. So it's the second book in the Empyrean series. It's a new fantasy um, series by Re- Rebecca Yaros. And the, fourth, uh, the first one's called Fourth Wing. The second one's called Iron Flame. And I believe the third book... Um, Onyx Storm comes out next year. So what an it sounds like, sounds like a great Pokemon move. <laughs> I know exactly. <laughs> but no, it's it's great. Like I've been listening to like the graphic audio versions on Audible and they're fantastic. It's literally like a movie in your head. There's sound effects. It you know, there's music, everything. It, it is it is quite possibly, and I'm mad at myself that I never like started this before because I know they've been out for a while. It's more like a dramatic audio experience, but it's it's phenomenal. So if you're ever looking for a book, like even if it's like Fourth Wing, because everyone just refers to it as Fourth Wing as like the entire series because that's what the first book's called. But if you're ever looking for that or just like any other audio books that um, offer um, graphic audio, definitely give it a shot because there, there's a few out there. And I'm just waiting for uh, them to, you know, for this to get popularized enough where, like, we can get some Harry Potter action in there. But I digress. Soon enough. Soon enough, soon enough. So outside of the industry, um, have you, what have you been playing? Did you pick up uh, Black Myth Wukong? I, I know you've been clamoring for it over there. I did not, but I did start up God of War. <laughs> oh, 2018. 2018. Yeah. What do you think of it so far? I mean, I played most of it on PS4, but I never finished it. So just kind of getting back into it. Oh, yeah. The good old days when we were able to uh, do the uh, give and take with that. Uh, what was it? It was it was some kind of like extra some kind of extra perk with the PlayStation. Yeah, they just gave you a bunch of games. And yeah. I guess they don't do that anymore. No, they actually stopped that. Like, you can't even know. Yeah, it kind of sucks. It, it was it was the strangest thing. But okay, you started God of War. I, I'm not sure if you've noticed, I've been on Steam lately. <laughs> I've been playing The Quarry. Oh, that's a fun one. Yeah, I've been playing that for the past few days. I think I'm nearing the end. Uh, my goal is to try to beat it this weekend, so I might play some later after we're done recording. Um, I think I'm about seven chapters in. I mean, it's really good. I like how, you know, it's like the quick time event. You're basically just playing out a movie like all together, but there's a few, you know, a few interactions, not a lot, but it's very good. <laughs> Didn't know Brenda's song was in it oh, yeah. <laughs> or, or Huey <laughs> from oh, Scream. Yeah. He is too. I, and, and uh, Justice Smith as well. I was very surprised. Good old, good old Ted Raimi. Yeah, yeah. So I, I am, I'm enjoying that a lot. I was like, well, you know, I wanted to. I, I feel like I haven't really been playing a lot of PC games. I've been, you know, studying for stuff and whatnot, trying to get some, some, some knowledge in, in the brain. Uh, <laughs> uh, just you know, focusing a lot of work related stuff. And I was like, man, I really just haven't played a lot of PC games lately and I was like I need to get back into it a little bit I'm like let me start off slow you know something I can kind of just enjoy and I almost started up Alien <laughs> was it not Colonial no, Alien that would not be nice and easy no that would not be nice and easy <laughs> I was like oh yeah I, I picked up the quarry it was on Green Man Gaming for $15 for the uh, ex- or the uh, deluxe edition I think it was so that, that was pretty cool I was like, oh, well, maybe it's like on Steam, like on sale. Nope, it was 60 I was like, I really like that game, but I don't know if I would have ever paid full price for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just one of those things. But it is developed by Supermassive Games, which also played a hand in the Until Dawn um, 
game as well. And they have a new game coming out. Um, it's kind of like an alien vibe game. So I think that comes out 2025. So definitely going to keep an eye out for that one for sure. But yeah, outside of playing the quarry and finishing up um, the second book in fourth wing, which is called Iron Flame. That's pretty much what I've been doing. But I'm glad that you're starting God of War. That's awesome. It's, it's, it's a great game, especially on PC. It's like running smooth as butter. You know, it's, it's, it's been a lot of, uh, there's it's a lot of stuff to play, Devin. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff to watch. It never and ends. It, no, it literally never ends. And I'm like, I was thinking the other day, I'm like, I probably just need to slow down on like, you know, it, you know, the backlog is always, whether it's movies or TVs or video games, it's like the backlog is always there. But it's like, oh man, you know, when when that when that sweet deal is like right there, you know, you just you just pick it up, throw it in the backlog, and get to it when you get to it, you know. So it's it's very tough to do that. So speaking of too many things to watch, um, as I mentioned before, we are here today going to be reviewing season four of the Umbrella Academy. This is the final season. Again, now streaming on Netflix. Man, oh man, Devin, we're, I'm I'm very interested to dive into this one because uh, I don't know. Um, I'm feeling I'm feeling some type of way about season four. So uh, let's just dive right on in. Without further delay, we will be right back after this introduction to the Umbrella Academy season four. Our world is changing has changed. There are some among us gifted with abilities far beyond the ordinary. I have adopted six such children. I give you the inaugural class of the Umbrella Academy. And smile. Uh, no. Oh, no. And we are back with the Umbrella Academy Season 4. We're going to be giving our spoiler review here. All six episodes. Yes, I said six episodes are now streaming on Netflix. Netflix loves to dump all of their episodes at once. So we were trying to figure out when to record this, but we kind of got distracted by Alien Romulus and um, other films such as Blink Twice and... Now other TV, uh, uh, television shows apparently. So this 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 is a special day, almost kind of sort of, because we've been following this show since the beginning, and we've enjoyed it up until this point. And man, oh man, it's there, there's something. It's 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 not bittersweet. It's it's a little underwhelming. It's lackluster uh, to say the least, but. The creators of the show, before I get into any of the nitty gritty, before we give our thoughts, our comments, our questions, our concerns, this show is created by Steve Blackman and Jeremy Slater and stars Elliot Page, Tom Hopper, David Castaneda, and many, many more. You know, the whole gang is back here. The, the entire the entire Hargreaves family is here and for those who are somewhat new to Umbrella Academy, if you are a new listener, welcome. Um, the synopsis is as follows. It is basically a family of former child heroes, now grown apart, must reunite to continue to protect the world. So there's a lot of similarities between Umbrella Academy and the show Doom Patrol, which is on Max. Let's just say HBO Max. <laughs> Where it is a family of misfits who have superhero or who have superhero abilities, who continuously protect the world every single season, the world faces like this you know big threat, this life ending threat, this world ending threat, and then the Umbrella Academy comes in, swoops in, saves the day. But it seems like it's been going around for a while, a cycle for sure. But, um, like I said, I feel a little, I feel a little betrayed. I'm not going to lie. But before I give my thoughts, I want to pass it over 
to Devin so we can give his initial reactions to the Umbrella Academy season four. Yeah, I think going into this one, there was like, I guess there's some some tempered hype um, just building up to it. We didn't really get a lot of fanfare or trailers or anything. I know we got a few little few little pieces here and there from Netflix, but nothing too crazy as far as the marketing for this one. But I know, like you said, we've been fans of the series since season one all the way back in 2019. So we've gotten five years of this show. Yeah. It's been a good, a good ride. Um, season one and season two were both, I would say, great as far as the TV series. Um, they just kind of built off each other and, and two just kind of took them to whole new places and it, it just all felt really well made and really nice. Um, and then three... It wasn't quite as good as the first two, but it still at least stayed consistent as a yeah. as a series. I would say, like it didn't really have any any too low of lows, or it didn't really have as high of highs as one or two. But it was still like consistent. Like okay, we can still enjoy this. But now we have season four, where it just seems like it's nice that the show got an ending, but the ending it got it just doesn't really feel right. Like you mentioned, it's only six episodes. They pulled the Disney Plus trick out of their hat. Um, the format that we all have learned to to hate for the most part, because <laughs> the first three seasons have all been ten episodes, and then this one is basically cut that in half. So that off the bat just didn't feel right. And then as we're going through the seasons, season it just it seems to just get sadder throughout the episodes, because we're basically starting from ground zero where none of our heroes have their powers. The first episode, um, and then they have to regain their powers and have to learn what their new powers are kind of and they're like different from their old ones but not too different it's just kind of weird like we're playing catch up in the fourth season of the show that just felt weird the entire time and then as we're going they're introducing new characters that we have not seen before or have seen very little of and i think it's too late in the series to start doing that um start, because we have to care about these characters and if i don't know who it is i'm not going to really care yeah. <laughs> Especially the end, there was the reveal that the stepmom was behind all of it. And it's just like, what, what, why? What? It doesn't mean anything to me. And then the, the final the final battle is just like a big video game monster they had to fight. It's just, it's just messy. Like, very messy ending. So I, I would have to agree with Devin um, on, on a lot of things. As he mentioned, we, we are longtime fans of this show um and i believe we started covering the show back when season two hits i think we just watched season one just to see what it was because the former uh ellen page was in this now known as elliot page and it just kind of you know piqued our interest i was like oh like it seems it seems like a very not sophisticated superhero show, but a superhero show where, you know, there's there's a lot of way, uh, crazy, wacky things going on, much like Doom Patrol, where you, where you do get to see them use their powers, but it is in small little spurts, but it's more about the family dynamic than the action that a typical superhero show would bring. And I got to say, um, yeah, it's... It's pretty, uh, before I even get into that, you know, going off of season three, which I, I enjoyed season three, definitely not as good as the first few seasons, but like, as Devin mentioned, it was still consistent. It was still a a structured season overall. There was just a lot happening in season three, which I feel like kind of lost a few people, but overall, it, it, it was grand in its own way. It was just a little bit different from what we were used to with the first two seasons. And then for the longest time, we didn't hear anything from Netflix or from the showrunners if it was going to get another season. And the time finally came where they announced that Umbrella Academy is getting a fourth season and that that fourth season would be its final season. I was like, oh, man. And I guess it made sense for the Umbrella Academy because you can only save the world from devastation so many times with a show like this. And this show is very comparable or similar to Doom Patrol when it comes to, it is, like I mentioned earlier, abandoned misfits of superhero misfits of family who um, aren't necessarily related by blood, but they, they go through these 
uh, crazy, wacky, kooky adventures of trying to save the world from, you know, certain destruction. But, you know, when when season four was announced, like Devin said, it also, you know, picking backing off him a lot here, but still, um, it's it's still true. Like we we were we were excited because we're like, yeah, it's getting a fourth season. We wanted to see what, you know, where these characters go next. And I was fine with it with the fourth season being the final season. But <laughs> you know, we and I didn't even know this. Like I think Devin started season four before me and he's like yeah it's only six episodes i was like it's only six episodes yeah. <laughs> i was like no i thought you were messing around with me for a second and i checked i was like wow like the way that season three ended we needed 10 episodes for this because usually disney plus shows are at least eight but six that's like I mean, I guess you could say it's kind of pulling like a season eight Game of Thrones, only in the similarity fact that there are six season or uh, not six seasons, six episodes. But I, after watching Umbrella Academy season four, I never want to hear anyone complain about how rushed Game of Thrones season eight was. Because if you want to talk about rushed, watch season four of Umbrella Academy. That is the most rushed story I've ever experienced in my entire life. Season three ended on this massive cliffhanger. Like, oh, you know, who's Hargrave's wife? Like, who is this woman? And the first episode of season four was pretty solid. Like, the first two. Yeah, I like the first two. And then it just... (laughs) The last four... Off the rails. It just... It all fell apart. And I, I don't, like... I'm I'm so disappointed. Like I'm more disappointed in this than any other show I've probably have watched within recent years because they had a good thing going. And I know there's a lot of controversy uh with one of the creators I believe who's also supposed who was supposed to be um taking the reins of the Horizon Forbidden West series, I believe, if I'm not uh mistaken. But th- th- there was just this this is a nothing season. Like there's like you said, Devin. Like I, we get some cool new characters, but again, it's the final season. It's six episodes. Why? Yeah, it's just too late for all that. It's it's far far too late. Especially because the 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 two characters they introduce are like crucial to the the story and how it ends. Like right, it just makes it so much worse. It's so terrible how like this this is just so rushed. I mean. Even with introducing new characters, you know, you, you had um, you had Ben from the Sparrow Academy because the Ben from the Umbrella Academy had already passed. We find out what happens to Ben, how he dies. And it was not satisfying at all. It was not satisfying whatsoever. They made it seem like it was this either like this massive sacrifice that Ben either made or it was like a terrible accident that happens with Ben from the Umbrella Academy, not from the Sparrow Academy. Again, because there's two different Bens, because they kind of do a little bit of a multiversal thing in, uh, in season three, which is why I think people were a little iffy about it. But yeah, I was like, that was so underwhelming. I'm like, oh, okay, so their dad kills him because there's like another child out there who has like the marigold inside of them. And I guess it's a, it's not marigold. It's something else where I guess it's like some kind of reaction between Ben and I can't even remember the, 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 the girl's name to be completely honest with you. Um, I thought she did a good job for what she was given, but it's like, again, introducing I think it was her, Jennifer, Jennifer introducing her and then Nick Offerman. And I believe his wife, um, AKA Tammy, was it Tammy too? From uh, <laughs> yeah, from like Parts that. and Rec, yeah, yeah. So it's like they were great, but it's like again, why? Are, like okay, like if they're going to be the villains, that's fine. But it's like you're you're introducing characters like Jennifer. So we we finally spend out of these four seasons. Um, Allison Hargraves, played by Emmy Raver Lam uh, Lampman, excuse me, Emmy Raver Lampman. Would we finally get her and her daughter? together because that's really been like her character arc 
the entire series. And it's like, I feel like we've seen more of Claire uh, played by Millie Davis. Like (laughs) we've seen her more in, um, in this season alone than like the other seasons, because, you know, Allison like is always like, she's all for her daughter, but I, I feel like I was like, Oh, okay. Like it was nice that she was, that she was there, but you know, Diego has a family now, you know, he's, he's got three kids, which is kind of crazy to think about, but yeah. Um, there, there's, I can't really even say too much, like not even the fact that we're in spoilers, but it's just, I'm trying to find the moments that I liked. And I think it always will go back to Klaus and his character. He was always the, the favorite for sure. He's definitely always, the especially favorite. season two. It's like, he kind of, took Oh over. yeah. <laughs> he created that cult. <laughs> uh, Robert, uh, Sheenan, uh, Klaus Hargreaves and, you know, five play by Aiden Gallagher. He's, he's always great. And then it's speaking, you know, speaking of five there, there are some kisses in this season that are, there were. they might be, they might be worse than rise of Skywalker. If I think about it long enough, I would say is equally. Yeah. It's equally as worse, but probably a little bit worse. So yeah. So you, you have uh, Diego and Lila, um, Lila played by Ritu Aria and Diego played by David Castaneda. Um, you know, they have if three beautiful children, you know, they're, they, they got their issues to work out. And um, during this season, um, <laughs> five and Lila uh, go on a, they get lost in time. Basically, there's like this. There's like this subway station that takes five to like these different moments and times um, within like the same reality and they get lost in time and they, you know, they, they start developing feelings for each other and they, they end up kissing and it, it was just really, really weird. Did not like that at all. It's so strange. I had to look up the actor's ages just cause I knew it was going to be pretty far off, but. I think it was worse than I expected. So <laughs> the actor that plays five is currently 20 years old. Okay. That's just a nice ripe 20 year old. Yeah. And the actor that plays Lila is 35. It's, it's just weird. Okay. I will say in their defense, it was more of like little smoochy. Like it was a kiss, but it wasn't like a, it was multiple times. It was multiple times, but from what I remember, at least I don't remember it being like, you know, tongue or like, it might have been. I gotta have you now, kind of thing. Um, but yeah, they they do kiss, but it wasn't as passionate as the kiss in Rise of Skywalker. I will say that I, I erased <laughs> that from my mind, so I just have to believe you. From 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 what I remember, at least I, I might have to look look this up. But from what I remember, it wasn't that passionate. Of a kiss. It was, you know, it, it was them kissing for sure. But it, but it wasn't like a peck on the cheek either. But it wasn't Rise of Skywalker. Like it was it was romantic and it, <laughs> it, made it no was sense. meant to be romantic. Yeah. But regardless, yeah, it's still weird. And I was like, okay, but like, why why even? What does this have to do with anything? And then I will say the one thing that makes sense out of this entire season because I know we've been jumping around here. Um, the one thing that makes sense is that in order to correct the timeline because they're uh, the children or like the Hargreaves uh, siblings are living. And it's like a moment out of time where they feel like uh, there's this other organization that feels like everyone came from a different timeline and they ended up in the same space or area, how, how earth, same world or universe. And they're trying to get back to their respective timelines. It makes sense that you know, the reason why there's multiple timelines and that the world keeps ending over and over is because of the children being born with, um, of, of them being born. And then I, I think that's when Hargreaves released the Marigold and it like, you know, affected like the, the, the mother's wombs of, of the Hargreaves children. It makes sense that in order to correct the timeline, the children have the Hargreaves children have to cease to exist in order for everything to go back to normal. That part made the most sense 
this entire series or this season, I should say, because it's like, like I mentioned earlier, it just seemed that like every single season, it was like a world ending event. It's like they've, you know, they, they fix it and then it's like temporarily and then the world goes back into like chaos again. So that part makes sense. And I was like, OK, but like how how do we get there? And I don't think they had a plan for this. I think we should have gotten 10 episodes <laughs> for sure. And if you're going to introduce uh, new characters in the final season, they may need to die because, you know, they, we were just now getting used to who these other people are. And it's I mean, like, I, I love the cast. It just sucks that it just didn't do much for me. I mean, it's sitting at a 55 percent on Rotten Tomatoes for the critic side. Again, that's 55 percent of people who enjoyed it. And then for the popcorn meter, for the <laughs> for the um, for the audience side, it is at eighteen percent with one thousand users. Yeah, and thirty eight reviews for fifty five out of uh, for the fifty five percent for for uh, critics. Um, yeah, it really just blows, man. Like. I th- I'm looking through a few of the uh, critic reviews and it looks like Valerie Ann from the uh, uh, auto straddle. She, uh, this is just like a small little tidbit of her review. Uh, she said, this is the way the <laughs> umbrella Academy ends, not with a bang, but with a whimper. And Jen Lennon from the AV club also says for a show that thrives on mess, this ending feels disappointingly neat. Give it a C minus. Jen Lennon from the AB Club. So yeah, there's 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 like three three fresh reviews, um, and there's one from one from Caroline Seedy from the Episodic Medium. She writes, uh, this is, again, a fresh review, so she actually enjoyed it. If there's a messiness on how the season unfolds, there is a boldness, too. Although I suspect there are some choices that will be decisive among the fan base, it's nice to see the show go out while it was still able to make, while it was still able to make big swings. Some parts I understand, like, it was able to finish, and I think that's the part that we're, I mean, that's the part that we're happy about, right? Is that it was able to have its fourth season, but this fourth season was just no bueno. <laughs> yeah, it's like we're happy, happy we got it, but then sad we got it. Yeah, and I'll read one more fresh just to kind of balance it out here. Uh, Ed Power from The Daily Telegraph in the UK, he writes the umbrella academy has a real affection for its lovable weirdos as the story builds to a moving final twist it is revealed that the show's true superpower is its humanity which i don't know if i necessarily agree with um i know i've been mentioning doom patrol season four which is the final season for that show as well um got a full 10 episodes it might have been a little bit more than 10 episodes i could be wrong but I know it was at least 10. Um, the season finale for that show was fantastic. It was moving. It was anything and everything you could want from a show like that, um, especially from a show that I didn't really think that Doom Patrol had like a huge following, but apparently it did. Four seasons, it's not bad. Um, same thing with Umbrella Academy. It's just disappointing with the results that we got because it's not like this came out of nowhere you know like they took their time we saw a little bit of marketing for it but it's not um it's not up to snuff like it's crazy how we waited this long for a season four and it's just rushed to the end i was like i i just don't it's 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 very messy it's very messy there's no real final goodbye between the hargrave siblings like they're Kind of, sort of, but like, you know, they kind of make the joke of, oh, you know, like we don't want this to be sappy or anything like that. So I don't know. It, it's pretty disappointing, but let's get into final thoughts and ratings here. Devin, 
What are your final thoughts and ratings of the Umbrella Academy season four? Yeah, final thoughts. Um, overall, I love the series, love these characters um, and the wild adventures we went on, but it just kind of came to a halt on season four. Instead of being a nice farewell send off, we just kind of got a disappointment, messy ending that kind of puts a damper on people's overall opinion on the show because when you have something that ends like this, it just kind of leaves you leaves you on that bad note and has that taste in your mouth. It's kind of hard to get rid of. Um, like we mentioned, there's just a lot of weird character decisions. There's a lot of new characters introduced that don't really mean anything to, to us and it's kind of hard to get behind them. And we've, we've always mentioned before that the CGI and the effects for Umbrella Academy are a bit off. It's like they don't have a full budget, but I've definitely felt it even more this season because it was how rushed it felt. Like some of the effects just looked really off. And a lot um, of the children, uh, their po- like once they get their powers back, it's like it's like everyone has new sets of powers almost. Well, at least it feels yeah, they like. all have different powers, especially um, Allison. Allison, I was like, what? I don't even know what her powers are anymore. Like they just became. I don't know what it even was. Yeah, yeah, but her power, her original power, was really cool. It was one of the cooler ones. Yeah, and then it's like she just. It's 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 like it's like they gave her Starlight's powers where she just flickers her eyes for a bit. Yeah, just flashes of light. <laughs> it just doesn't do anything else. <laughs> I was like, man, and even Victor, his uh his powers changed a little bit cuz I remember it being, you know, like a white light type of entity, you know, he's like flame on kind of. <laughs> yeah. I think the so, only Yeah, it's like it's like they stripped the powers down and then gave yeah. them worse ones just didn't yeah. really make sense there's a few siblings that kept theirs like between luther for sure um Klaus. if you want to call his powers i don't even know if luther ever did anything worthy like he's no. kind of strong but that's about it oh, do you remember that dance number in season three to like open out the entire se- that was so awesome yeah i mean there's gonna be good memories for the first three seasons um hopefully those can live on but as far as this season especially for a a series finale you, you get six episodes and the last few of them just really fall off the cliff i mean i'd probably give it like a probably give it like a 54 overall like man that's, that's low it's, yeah for tv that's really low yeah so it's like that's just kind of how disappointing it all felt for me um i mean a lot of my final thoughts kind of align with yours it's, it's just very disappointing to see you know we get the good news of a fourth season and, and, you know, we live in the age of where TV shows can be canceled at any moment and let alone not even just canceled, but removed from the streaming service. And I was so excited for season four. I was like, Oh my gosh, like, you know, it, it's, it should be amazing. Like the first, first three seasons definitely hold up. It's, it's awesome. You know, season three definitely ended on like an amazing cliffhanger. And then, I I don't I don't even know what this is. It it just sucks. Where it's like you know these, you know you follow these characters and for it it's one thing if it's like like a single like bad episode or two, but like this is majority of the season. Like outside of the first two episodes, and then it just it's just a train wreck from there. Where there's just so much going on, they're trying to implement all these ideas like oh ben's death and then jennifer coming into the mix and then you had uh the society of people who was trying to get back to their own timelines and and then i i guess i i don't know if the woman was or uh hargreaves's wife was like behind it all i i don't even know that's what it it felt like they were trying to do and it just did not work at all it was just the weirdest thing and i'm like I, i i don't even know what's going on anymore like when I was watching the season finale, I was like, I mean, I, I get that they have to sacrifice themselves to, you know, correct the timeline. But that was literally, I, I don't know. It, it was just strange, strange stuff. You know, Victor trying to, um, it's definitely staying true to his character, trying to, um, you know, resolve things without too much conflict. But yeah, it just wasn't, it just wasn't good, man. This is such a disappointment um, altogether. I, I would probably just give it like a 50 out of 100. Um, if, yeah, cause you know, I want to give it uh, as a series overall, a great series. It just starts fumbling once you get to season four 
um, which really, really sucks. And it's like they they had one job. Like they had all this time and you made six episodes. I guess I'd much rather have six episodes for it to be done quicker because each episode is only around like 50 minutes. So it's not like each of those episodes are longer. It's just, yeah. But just another disappointing uh, finale or just a uh, season finale. Not even season finale, but yeah, final season of television. <laughs> and that concludes today's episode. If you enjoyed what you heard, make sure to subscribe to our podcast on your preferred podcast platform of choice. Make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and threads at Film Optics. That is Optics with an X. And don't forget to share an episode of our podcast with a movie lover, whether it be your mother, your brother, or your significant other. Spread the love for the Film Optics podcast with a movie lover in need. And now let's take a sneak peek what's coming up next on the show. So after this, I believe we are going to be covering Blink twice. Um, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice is coming up pretty soon as well. Um, what else? comes out this week i'm blanking right now but we will be there <laughs> just follow us on instagram twitter all that social media garbage you'll know exactly what we will be covering as far as new releases that you can listen to right now you can listen to our alien romulus review as well as our cuckoo review and our borderlands review and our trap review that was directed by Mr. M. Night Shyamalan. And with all that said, thank you all for listening. If you enjoyed the show, please take a moment to leave us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And stay connected with us by following us on Twitter, Instagram, all that social media garbage for the latest updates. That was Devin and I'm Christian signing off. And remember, life is like a movie. So go out there and make it a blockbuster. Peace.